All right, folks, you know what this is. This is mock draft number 11. couple quick things for those that are new. I do not select the draft order. It is as the draft order was about a week ago when I started doing this mock draft. Um, in addition, the uh, evaluation of prospects is not done by me. This is an aggregated big board, meaning I go out to all the different websites, whether it's the Draft Network, whether it's Tankathon, whether it's uh, Draft Tech, whatever. I take all those boards and I combine them into one big board and I average everything out. If you'd like to see that board, subscribe to the channel. Um, hit the join button, join that. Uh, whenever I update my board, I'm just going to paste it in there for those that are subscribed and are joining my channel. In other words, they are members and part of the membership will be able to see those. Um, and I'll try to get you some more in-depth stuff on that, but it's kind of complicated. Anyways, um, that's where I'm starting from. So if you don't really like where things are, I think there are certain things that I don't necessarily agree with. There are prospects that are in here that I personally am not a big fan of, but because I don't have my own particular board, built out this is what it is for now i may switch a couple things up leave a couple guys out because i generally don't like them and a lot of you guys don't really like them um and i think they're eventually going to fall so we'll leave them out but um otherwise i think we're all caught up let's get started with the first overall pick in the 2021 nfl draft the jacksonville jaguars select trevor lawrence quarterback clemson i man listen I don't want to sound cold here because I know this is a dark moment for Jets fans, but I'm, I'm glad that we're getting some movement here. We get a couple things that are getting changed up, and this may continue to change. The season is not over. The Jets may still get Trevor Lawrence. We'll see what happens. Um, but, you know, great, great moment for Jaguars fans to get a generational talent like Trevor Lawrence. And um, I guess my understanding, as most people see it, and I think some people maybe disagree but not many, it's basically you got Trevor Lawrence and then a massive drop off and then you got Justin Fields, you got Zach Wilson, you got some of those other guys that are mixed in there. So there are some people that are saying the right move is for the Jets to trade back. We'll see how that all plays out, but um, clearly a no brainer for the Jaguars here. Um, there might be like two people hanging on to Minshew out there in the world, but um, I mean, this is about as straightforward as it gets. Trevor, Trevor Lawrence to the Jaguars. With the second overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. Now, again, I understand some people are saying, look, let's just trade back. Let's get a bunch of picks. I tend to think that's largely Jets fans that are just, no offense, kind of throwing a temper tantrum, and rightly so. I would be doing the same thing, but it's kind of just a defeatist you know, forget it. Let's just let's stack it up and maybe get a better quarterback next time. Justin Fields is a good quarterback, man. Um, I think if it wasn't for Trevor Lawrence and you guys had the number one pick and got Justin Fields, you'd be doing backflips because of the situation. Um, it's actually somewhat of a benefit to have a guy like Trevor Lawrence because Justin Fields falls to number two. Um, I, again, if you think you should trade back or possibly draft Panay Sewell, I've heard. I don't necessarily agree with I mean, there's nothing wrong with having two elite dominant tackles or, you know, which one goes right tackle, which one goes left. I, I don't know what you do with that situation. But I, I just, the thing that makes the most sense by a mile for me is is to just take Justin Fields. I, I don't think there's any guarantee that if you stack up a bunch of talent, then next year you're going to get the best quarterback in the draft, which first of all, there's no guarantee it's going to be Justin Fields. And who knows if you're picking 12th next year. People make too many wild assumptions. You're not going to be in a position to draft a quarterback back like Justin Fields almost ever in, in, in as far as NFL franchises go. Bird in the hand, man. Just draft them. That's my thought. Let me know in the comments. With the third overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Penny Sewell, offensive tackle, Oregon. I mean, again, the first three have been relatively consistent. These are the three players, even though the teams have swapped around a little bit. Um have heard a couple different rumblings and and I, and I like that there are rumblings because it keeps it somewhat interesting at least on draft day I don't know if I'm going to change what I'm doing necessarily we'll see what happens as rumors begin to swirl and as the draft order changes and whatever happens over the next couple weeks here um but I I just feel like this is probably the right decision it's not probably it is definitely the right decision um but the, the, it's going to make draft day at least a little bit more interesting because there's going to be a little voice in the back of your head saying what if um, but I think at the end of the day, we're probably going to be disappointed. It's going to go Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Penny Sewell. But we'll see how it goes. With the fourth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select 
Zach Wilson, quarterback, BYU. So this one's kind of cool because Panther fans really, really want a quarterback, and understandably so. A couple are saying that's maybe not the best option. And I understand when I talked to Big Cat, for example, he talked about, you know, we're probably not going to trade up for one. There's a possibility that we ended up trading back and getting picks and all these kinds of things. But the benefit is, I think if you're sitting at four, I think this is the right thing to do. Now, maybe it's Trey Lance or something. I don't really know. I tend to think it's going to be Zach Wilson. But... Again, it, it kind of takes the guesswork out of it. We don't have to trade up. We don't have to do anything crazy. We're sitting right here. We control our own destiny. Let's just take Zach Wilson, right? It, it, it just makes sense. It, exact same thing I said about the Jets. You can say, well, we don't want to put him behind the offensive line, and we, we need more of this. We need more of that. We need a better defense before we go out and get it. You don't know that you're going to be in a position to get a Zach Wilson. He's sitting right there. Just take him. Again, that's my thought. Let me know in the comments, but I tend to think Panthers fans are going to be pretty content with that with the fifth overall pick in the 2021 nfl draft the atlanta falcons select trey lance quarterback ndsu i tend to think falcons fans aren't going to like this but i don't really know um i have seen a lot of people say we need a quarterback 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 i'm a little confused by it to be completely honest and this is one of those picks i make just to kind of gauge the room and see where people are at usually when i do that people don't like it but um it is interesting um, because the first thing that I'm looking at is, are we looking at a new regime in Atlanta that wants to go in a completely different direction, right? We, what we have is old. we got the same old quarterback or the, the same old quarterback, the same old wide receiver, the same old coach, the same old GM, all the same stuff for a very long time. If we're going to get new, let's get new. So from that standpoint, I get it. The, the, the biggest issue I have is that Matt Ryan, I don't think is the problem. Um, and also he's under contract for quite a long time, but, um, I could possibly see it happening. And I also am getting tired of drafting Gregory Rousseau to the Falcons. So um, I'm going to try it out. Again, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. This is Mock Draft 11, which means I do this a lot. There's going to be another one next week. I'm not your actual GM, so you don't have to be super angry about it. It's just a question. Just answer the question, and we can all move on and, and recalibrate a bit. That's all we're trying to do. You don't have to freak out about every single thing as though I just actually made that. I'm not I'm not your GM. I maybe, maybe you were confused by that. The draft isn't today. I'm not the GM. I'm just, just – okay, we'll move on. With the sixth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins via the Houston Texans are going to accept a trade from the New York Giants. The Giants are going to come up from 10 to 6. They're going to offer up a second round pick. And for the sixth overall pick, the New York Giants select Gregory Rousseau, edge rusher, Miami. A couple things. Number one, people always freak out when you just give up a second round pick and you are anywhere in the top 10. Not only do the big boy or the the whatever trade charts say that that's adequate if you go look at recent history that is the right move that's what teams have done to go from 10 to 6 so a second round pick doesn't seem like much but i'm telling you that's what teams are using to get up there um in terms of thought process as the miami dolphins i'm looking at it there's clearly options but four quarterbacks have gone meaning basically every single person that we want is still available so why not get that extra second round pick, which by the way, now we have, what, two first round picks, three second round picks? Yeah, yes, please. I think I'll, I'll be okay with that. Um, and we know we're still going to get a good player. So that was my thought there. The, the biggest issue is there's a lot of prospects for Miami, but there's a lot of prospects for everybody. Why not wait until somebody's going to move back? And that's true except for one guy, and that's Gregory Rousseau, because there's not a lot of, of edge rushers. Now, granted, this is one of those situations where Gregory Russo is falling down the boards, and, and maybe this isn't the right pick based on your perception of Gregory Russo, but based on the board that I have, he is the clear number one edge rusher. And if you're the Giants, you know, I've been kind of hyping you guys up for a while because I, I do appreciate the quarterback, the offensive line. Um, I think we can make a couple swings here and there, de defensive line, but you add in a solid edge rusher to your defensive line. Um, you know, maybe we'll get some more weapons at wide receiver and at a later time. I'm not going to do it in the second round now, but there's a lot of wide receivers in this draft. I mean, we're really in a good position, but I think this is one of the big things we needed to do is get an edge rusher. So when the opportunity came up to move up and get the top edge rusher, it just felt like a, a, a great decision at the time. So Gregory Russo to the Giants at six. With the seventh overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Jamar Chase, wide receiver, LSU. So I'm, I'm pretty torn. Um, it seems like Eagles fans, and understandably so, are they either want Jamar Chase or Micah. 
um, and usually the other half really doesn't like the other pick. So the the biggest factors for me was first of all we drafted a first round pick last year, which bothers me to have to do that again. But I wanted to look at it and say, okay, two things. Number one, who's who's higher on my big board? That's Jamar Chase. And then number two, what's worse? Our um, you know defense, especially against the run, which is what um, Micah Parsons is going to help us with the most, or our passing offense. Our passing offense is ranked 32nd in the NFL right now. So it's one of those things. That's the biggest thing that's going to help us kind of get a boost. And, and you know, we got to continue to monitor what's going on with Jalen Hurts. Maybe that's going to give us a boost automatically to our passing offense as well as, you know, our rushing offense and every other facet of our offense. But it certainly isn't going to hurt to have uh, Jalen Hurts with a second-year Jalen Rager and now a Jamar Chase mixed into this whole thing. And again, I understand Jamar Chase is also sliding down. Some other wide receivers are coming up. This is still where it is as of right now. We'll see where it ends up. But uh, getting that premier wide receiver and also a good compliment. Jamar Chase is sort of that big body, X receiver, great body control, sort of like a CD lamb, whereas Jalen Rager is your speed guy on the outside. I think you're going to have that real great compliment um, between the two wide receivers, whereas a lot of the other wide receivers coming up are kind of the Jalen Rager-esque type. So I do like the fact that it's sort of a, a yin and yang kind of thing with the wide receivers to have both of those kind of complementary pieces on your offense. With the eighth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys are going to accept a trade from the Detroit Lions. The Lions are going to move up from 11 to 8. They're going to give up a third round pick. Again, I don't want to hear about compensation. I did my homework. I know what I'm doing. With the eighth overall pick, the Detroit Lions select Micah Parsons, linebacker, Penn State. Again, one of the things I always do with the trades is go back and look at precedent. What have teams actually used to go from 11 to 8? And the answer is a third round pick. Maybe you don't like it, but that's what it is. Um, either way, though, Dallas Cowboys fans have been very vocal about trading back, and I think it makes a lot of sense right here. Um, now, we could take Micah Parsons if we really wanted to, but otherwise, if, we, if we're okay losing out on him, Similar to what I said about the Dolphins, we can move back and there's still a ton of talent. All the different positions that we like, still available. So the, the, the question is, again, similar to Gregory Rousseau, there's a bunch of wide receivers and all kinds of stuff like that that you can wait for and not have to trade up for. But there's one Micah Parsons, right? Otherwise, you're going to wait till the mid or end of the first round to get a linebacker. And so who's the team that wants to move up and get them? I think it makes the most sense for the Detroit Lions. Now, they, the, the Lions didn't have to move up, but the defense is a very serious problem, and I think linebacker in particular is a massive problem. So we've got an opportunity to really transform the defense with one pick here, and uh, we're only giving up a third-round pick to do it. So we're going to make the, the decision to give up pick th uh, 73, and we're going to go up and get Micah Parsons from Penn State. With the ninth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the L.A. Chargers select Samuel Cosme, offensive tackle, Texas. Now, I did consider trading back here. Um, the, the value isn't exactly as I wanted it to be, and we had some options on interior guys like Wyatt Davis that we could get later on. But the fact of the matter is it takes two to tango. And right now, the only guys that teams would want to trade up for, the guys that are really good values, would be uh, receivers. And we've got Devontae Smith, we got uh, Kyle Pitts, we got Jalen Waddle, we got Rashad Bateman, we got Rondale Moore. They're all available. So who's going to trade up when they can just wait and get a guy later? At least, even if you're way back in the draft, you want to wait and see how these things kind of pan out because maybe these guys will fall really far. We could always trade up later. We're not doing it right now. So. I could not find any trade partners that would be interested without completely just forcing it, and I don't want to do that. So I think the Chargers are stuck here. They're going to have to make a pick, and I do still think that offensive line has to be the way that we're going. So we're going to reach a little bit and get the top tackle on our board, and that's Sam Cosme. With the 10th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins are back on the clock. Select Devontae Smith, wide receiver, Alabama. I mean, this this is ideal, right? Essentially, if you think about it, we traded Jamar Chase for Devontae Smith and a second-round pick. Beyond a no-brainer. So we're going to reunite Devontae Smith with Tua. We're going to get this offense stoked up. Um, the defense, number one in the NFL right now, absolutely playing dominant football. Not that there aren't some pieces that we can continue to, to build on and, and all that kind of stuff as guys get older or whatever. But right now it's all about getting Tua comfortable, getting him some weapons, building up this offense. If we can keep the defense, even as a top five defense, and get this offense up into top ten territory, we're, we're a serious threat. Serious threat. And um, 
again with the amount of picks that we have we have another one coming up and now we have three second round picks and we just added Devonte smith you would have to really mess this up to not be one of the better teams in football in 2021 i mean it's just the, the amount of potential for the dolphins right here is stupid super jacked for the dolphins right now with the 11th overall pick the dallas cowboys are back on the clock and with the 11th overall pick the cowboys select patrick sertan cornerback alabama now the last time i did this cowboys fans hated it but to be fair that was at pick four this is at pick 11. Um, I also understand some people like different corners a little bit better, and I also do realize that you all are huge fans of Diggs, and I'm not going to keep bugging you about that. He has come on pretty strong the second half of the year. Um, every reason to be optimistic about him. Even still, I don't see any problem with having a duo of Diggs and Sertan in Dallas, right? We know, and, and again, uh, it, it's my opinion that we need to get a new coach and offensive coordinator. I, some of the comments, well, they're not getting rid of him. It's only been a year. I don't care. It doesn't matter. The question is, did Mike McCarthy improve? Did he take a year off and, and learn how to run a modern style of offense or is he the same guy that couldn't innovate in Green Bay? He's the same guy. You need to cut bait as quickly as possible. You have way too much talent being squandered. You have an, a top-tier quarterback. You have one of the best wide receiver groups in football. You have a premier running back. You need to be the number one offense in football. Find a coach that's going to get you there. Anyways, now that we have that, we're going for dominant cornerback duo. There's no reason this thing can't be turned around in one year. Right now, offense is already a top five offense. Defense is getting back on track. It needs to happen. It's not going to happen under McCarthy. We can play stupid games and say, well, it's only been a year. Let's give him time. Packers did that for about five years. Well, let's give him more time. 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 Did the same thing with Ted Thompson. Let's give him time. Let's give him time. Give him to Dom Capers. Let's give him time. Give him to you want to play that stupid game? Play that stupid game. He can't do it. He ran a great offense in 2011. That style of offense doesn't work. It doesn't work in Green Bay. It doesn't work in Dallas. It's not going to work. It's time to move on. Patrick Sertan to the Cowboys. With the 12th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Caleb Farley, cornerback, Virginia Tech. I mean, as long as he's available, I feel like this is the pick. I mean, it could be a different corner depending on how things fall. I did actually consider having the 49ers trade up during one of these times when teams are calling around. But again, there were so many cornerbacks on the board. Sertan was there. Farley was there. Sean Wade is there. I felt good enough waiting to see, you know, how things panned out. And we end up with Caleb Farley, who is a dominant uh, cornerback in college football right now. And um, as I've said, the amount of guys leaving, this is a necessity. It has to be done. And I think they're in a really good position right now where there's going to be a good cornerback available. Now, if you guys start winning football games, fall too far, maybe not quite as much. But you still got guys like J.C. Horn. Somebody should be around that's a quality cornerback for you. Just don't mess around and, and win too many games at this point. OK, you got some great corners sitting there. Let's let's just let's let's I like this. I like Caleb Farley. Right, it's set in stone. Let's can we just etch it in right now and we'll just leave it alone because that's what I'd like to do. With the 13th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos will accept a trade from the Chicago Bears. With the 13th overall pick, the Chicago Bears select Kyle Trask, quarterback, Florida. You know, this was tough on on both accounts. Um, Broncos were in a similar situation of I wasn't exactly sure where to go, but no matter where I went, those options would have been available later, right? We go edge, we go uh, whatever. There's Even if one of those guys goes, there's a secondary option available. Um, so trading back just felt like let's, let's let a couple guys get off the board, grab another pick, and as far as compensation, what did I do here? It is going to be pick 80 overall, which is a third-round pick from the Chicago Bears. From the Bears' perspective, it's tough because Trask is not the greatest value. Even sitting at 16, we moved up to 13 to get him. But having done several mocks, I realized if, if we leave the first round without a quarterback, we're in a lot of trouble. We really are. And, and Kyle Trask, as much as Mac Jones gets a lot of love, I think Kyle Trask is the one guy that has the, you know, all the tools kind of thing, whereas Mac Jones, I think the concern is as good as he is, he doesn't really have those extra attributes, the arm talent, the, the all these other things that come along with it. Kyle Trask kind of has that. So it, it really is, are we going to really invest and say Kyle Trask is the guy, or are we just going to cash it in or call it in? Um, and considering the talent depletion for the Chicago Bears in the near future, I think this is the way to go. There's a lot of rumors about we're going to keep uh, Trubisky. If you guys want to play that game, go ahead. I'm all for it. But um, 
it's a bad decision. You should not do that. So Kyle Trask to the Bears. With the 14th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Wyatt Davis, offensive guard, Ohio State. I mean, it's it's another one that's similar to the 49ers where I'm ready to just lock this one in stone. It is going to get a little bit more interesting as you guys lost to the Saints and potentially will lose last week or next week. I don't really know. But if, if you get high enough, if you end up as a top 10 pick, let's just say, what, what are some of the other options? Um, not trying to rub it in or anything, but, but Wyatt Davis is sort of a mid to late first round prospect right now and you guys are sort of a an early kind of prospect so do we want to trade back and get a bunch of compensation is there somebody that you really like it's been kind of boring for the vikings getting wyatt davis every week so i would love it if you guys could jump in the comment section and let me know let's say you're pick 10 pick 11 pick 9 who do you like in that spot do we want another corner do we take a shot at caleb farley even though we invested a bunch in it and cam dancer is looking like a real top tier cornerback the last several weeks or whatever um do we possibly take a heavy swing at a quarterback let me know with the 15th overall pick in the 2021 nfl draft the new england patriots select kyle pitts tight end Florida. So last time I had to trade up to get Kyle Pitts. It's tough to trade up because you guys don't have a ton of picks for New England, but um, if he's going to fall into our lap, this is beyond a no-brainer. I don't even know what else to do about it, unless you're just a huge fan of Jalen Waddell and would rather have him or, or one of the other wide receivers. Um, we need weapons. Kyle Pitts is an absolute freak. You know, talk about generational talent at tight end. This is this is the guy. And generally, guys that are this good go in the top 10. So I, I still have a hard time, you know, when you look at the TJ Hawkinsons, when you look at the Eric Ebrons, both Detroit guys, um, that, well, Hawkinson's fine. We'll leave that alone. Um, I just have a hard time believing he's going to make it out of the top 10, but maybe. we got a lot of quarterbacks and things that, that uh, could push him out. Either way, though, again, if he falls to 15, it's a no-brainer. So Kyle Pitts to the Patriots. With the 16th overall pick, the Denver Broncos are back on the clock. And with that pick, the Broncos will select Quiddy Pay, edge rusher, Michigan. Now, I don't know if edge is as dire as some people are making it out to be, but I absolutely understand the situation, especially in the future, right? With Von Miller likely being gone sooner than later, and he's coming off an injury, so you got to wonder what level of play he's going to be at um chubb is i guess i don't know how you guys feel about chubb i mean i think it's safe to say he's been a disappointment he's not as good as you had hoped he would be is there still optimism that he's going to get better what's the situation there i don't really know but um again i i, I would be fine going in a different direction if we felt the need to whether that's you know quarterback or um i don't know I, off the top of my head i can't think but um there's a lot of other options that I think would be fine, but I definitely understand for the future why we need to start investing in an edge rusher because it's going to get dire soon, possibly as early as next year, depending on what version of Vaughn comes back. With the 17th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders will accept a trade from the Indianapolis Colts, already our fourth trade and not the last one in this draft. And with the 17th pick, the Indianapolis Colts select Jalen Waddell, wide receiver, Alabama. So they are going to give up a fourth round pick. Again, I know that that compensation isn't great, but I took note of what happened last time. In 2004, the Denver Broncos went from 24 to 17 to select DJ Williams. They gave up pick 117. We are giving up pick 120 to make the exact same move from 24 to 17. So that's where I get that from. Um, my thought process here as far as the, the, well, the Raiders, I just didn't like the board. For the Colts, and again, there are wide receivers available, but we're kind of a ways back, and I don't know how many are going to make it to us, and I also don't really want to just wait for whatever scraps are left. We've got an opportunity to go up and get a premier wide receiver in Jalen Waddell, and I want to do that. But my, my, my overall thought process and why it's so urgent is I feel like the Colts are really hitting their stride right now. Um, you know, we're starting to see Jonathan Taylor come on strong. Um, the, the scheme seems to be working with the quarterback. T.Y. Hilton, especially right now over the last four weeks via PFF, is a top five wide receiver in the league. He's absolutely being dominant. But the problem is, it's not that he's bad. It's that he's not going to be sticking around. Some of the key components that we have, Costanzo, T.Y., Phillip Rivers, these guys are, are part of the reason that this that we're having a resurgence, and they're not going to be around for very much longer. So... Um, I want to make sure that we keep this thing stoked up because there there really is something special here 
but at the same time again we're going to be losing some key components so we got to make sure that we get another tackle we got to get a wide receiver and at some point we're going to be looking at another quarterback i tend to think we're going to try to keep rivers around for maybe another year um i don't really know about costanzo and ty they may just be gone gone but um at the very least again i feel like this is an important thing and when when we get a call for a fourth round pick it's kind of a no-brainer for me with the 18th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Rashad Bateman, wide receiver, Minnesota. I feel like every single week there's a team that trades up right in front of the Ravens and snipes a wide receiver, which, by the way, is part of the reason why you move up because you you know that, I mean, if you don't accept the trade, somebody else is accepting the trade. They may be taking a wide receiver, and you know the Ravens are probably taking a wide receiver. So that's two of the three or four available that are going to be gone. So it, it, it adds to the urgency. Um but again, I, I just I, I don't think the wide receivers are very good in, in Baltimore. And I know Hollywood has shown some promise, and a lot of you guys really like Hollywood, and maybe he's going to improve in year three. Um, I think via PFF, though, I don't know if you have a top 50 wide receiver right now, um, especially in recent history. The tight ends have been producing, which is great, and obviously you got a quarterback that is a dual threat. Um, there are some things that are working, but you know, if you want to look at what's the one thing that's really going to take us to the next level, it's getting a premier wide receiver, which we don't have. I mean, the fact that you guys have had so much success without one is impressive. What happens when you get one? We got to take a swing. We got to get one. With the 19th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Washington football team selects Christian Derisaw, offensive tackle, Virginia Tech. I mean, look, the, the defense is really starting to hit its stride right now. One of the better defenses down the stretch. Um, the offense clearly is the target. Why, uh, quarterback is an option uh, in terms of target, but right now there just aren't very many unless we want to go for Mac Jones, which I think is entirely too early and unnecessary. But we know that we need to build up the offensive line. We know that tackle is a massive need for our team. So let's just do the prudent thing, go out, get a, an offensive tackle. We'll see how things progress later. Maybe we take a swing at a quarterback in, in rounds two or three or whatever, or maybe we just let it ride. We look at free agency. I don't know, but right now the right pick is offensive tackle, so Christian Derisaw to Washington. With the 20th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Sean Wade, cornerback, Ohio State. Now, Wade has been falling down the boards quite a bit, and that's going to end up being to our benefit because I think it's pretty critically important in my opinion that we address the cornerback position. We have to get better, we have to get younger, and um, not getting one, not necessarily in the first round, but but early, is going to be a giant hindrance. Um, this is another team, I think, similar to Miami and whatnot, when you look at the quarterback play that seemingly is, is improving. Um, I really like the quarterback in terms of his ability to get better over time. That's promising, but we got a ways to go, and I think the defense definitely needs some work. And, and again, this isn't it doesn't have to be corner, but I do think that's one of the biggest needs we have. So we're going to take advantage of Sean Wade falling all the way to 20, and we're going to take him right here. With the 21st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Rondale Moore, wide receiver, Purdue. Now, this one's a little iffy because, yes, we did just get um, Devontae Smith, wide receiver out of Alabama, at pick 10. But it's kind of one of those I want to play with it and see what happens in the comment section things. But I also had a thought of, look, Again, number one defense in football, arguably, right? It's, it's a very, very good defense. We need to get the offense going. And the whole thing that I said before about if we can get the offense going, who's going to stop us? We now got Devontae Smith and Rondale Moore wide receivers for Tua for a very long time going forward. We still have three second-round picks coming up. So, you know, you could say, well, we could get a wide receiver later. Yeah, we can get everybody later. We can get whatever we want later. We have an opportunity to get another premier wide receiver that has fallen and is a great value. And now we have two first-round picks. So even if one isn't great, probably have one that's going to be very good. And then we also have the opportunity, the possibility of having two great wide receivers. And if you look at the early round wide receivers from the 2020 draft, this past draft, a lot of these guys did actually pan out quite well. And I'm not saying that either of these guys are necessarily going to be Justin Jefferson, but um, the fact that you can get quality wide receivers and possibly two of them, I don't know, man. I, the, the, the potential is just too much to pass up, and I think we should at least have that conversation. Is it possible? Is it completely out of line? I, I'm, I'm just going for it, man. We're taking two wide receivers. 
With the 22nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will accept a trade from the New York Jets. The New York Jets via the Seattle Seahawks will move from 26 to 22. They will be giving up their second third round pick, pick 90. And with the 22nd pick, the New York Jets select J.C. Horn, cornerback, South Carolina. Um, you know, again, it always starts with Tampa Bay wanting to move back. And, and as I look at it, again, corner has completely thinned out to the point of it's Horn, and then it kind of falls off after that. Um, the Jets have other options. We could look at wide receiver, which, again, is getting massively depleted um, after Rondale Moore went. I mean, who's who's next on the list other than some second-round picks? So when we get the phone call, we've got a bunch of picks to be able to move up. Outside of cor- uh, quarterback, I think cornerback might be our biggest need. There's just nothing redeemable about our corners right now. Um, it just makes a lot of sense, right? We, we got one more swing at a corner. We can pull the trigger right now. Let's just do it. So, J.C. Horn to the Jets. With the 23rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Jeremiah Owosu Koromoa, linebacker, Notre Dame. Um, I like the Browns, man. I, I just and, and I've been saying this for a while. It's been kind of a long time coming. It's what scares me about Detroit. Is it's one of those things you you look at the roster construction and say they should be a little bit better. Um, you know. There have been a lot of pieces added in, in recent memory, um, recent history, that that if everything came together, you knew it was going to be special. And you're kind of at that point right now. Um, you got Miles Garrett. You've got your quarterback. You've got some wide receivers. You've got probably the best offensive line in football. Things are really clicking, but it's not perfect. Um, I think especially when you look at the defensive side of the ball, there's a couple of question marks, I think, at corner. It's a little bit iffy. Um, linebacker clearly is a is a question mark. The defensive line outside of Miles Garrett, uh, Olivier Vernon is doing a great job recently. It looks like he's still got it in the t- a little bit left in the tank, which is great. Um, but he's not a long-term option. And the defensive line itself is somewhat of a, an, an issue. So I, I wanted to focus on that, whether defensive line, edge, linebacker, you know, the, the defensive front, the box, and um, take a swing there. And I do think uh, Owosu Koromoa is a really good linebacker. I'm, I'm actually thinking he may go earlier than this, but um, it just, it, again, it's it's how do we take a great team and and take it to the next level to get us over the hump? Because there's a lot of inconsistency here where, you know, a team that seems to have a decent enough defense suddenly gives up 40 points. We got to get a little bit more stability here and getting a field general in the middle of that defense, I think is going to be one of the best things that we can do. So we're going to take a swing at Jeremiah Owosu Koromoa, linebacker out of Notre Dame. With the 24th pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the Las Vegas Raiders are back on the clock. Select Carlos Basham, edge rusher, Wake Forest. You know, I, I'm a fan of the Raiders insofar as I, I think they're winning more games than they are than you would expect, I guess, based on their current roster construction. But one of the things I think they're you're never going to have success until we get better up front on the defensive side of the ball. The defensive line, I know you got like one good, decent defensive tackle, but um, it's just not good enough, man. We took a swing at an edge rusher that seemed to be a massive swing and a miss. Um, we, we've tried to get some better defensive tackles, nothing doing. We went out in free agency and got a bunch of linebackers. Those guys aren't doing a great job. We've, we just have to do better up front. And um, we're going to go out and get Basham, who I think is going to be a better pass rusher than what we have, hopefully. And if nothing else, he should be better in terms of stopping the run on defense. Um, I mean, we, we just we have a lot of work to do, which is somewhat unfortunate. But um, I do think that's probably the biggest boost we can get right now. Uh, we can make things work on offense. We can do some things on defense. But um, if there's no pass rush, there's no there's no team. There's no Super Bowl aspirations. There's just there's really nothing. So we've got to do a better job off the edge. And so we're going to invest in Carlos Basham. With the 25th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle, Alabama. I mean, look, we're, the, the celebration hasn't ended. And, and if we do nothing but build around Trevor Lawrence, that's that's fine with me. I mean, it, it, nothing else matters, right? We got Trevor. All is right with the world. Let's just, the only thing we need to make sure is that, that he doesn't get ruined here. So, you know, if, if we do nothing but invest in offensive line and maybe a wide receiver or something, 
cool. I, just, I mean, who, who cares? Right? What are they going to do? Say you're an idiot GM. You don't know how to actually do things. You need to also... I don't care. I got Trevor Lawrence, dude. That's the only thing I care about right now. He's, he's the thing that's going to help us win Super Bowls over the next 15 years. Again, I'm sorry, Jets fans. With the 26th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are back on the clock, select Joseph Asai, edge rusher, Texas. It's kind of tough. I mean, it, it really kind of comes down to age, which is kind of a problem for this team in general, starting with your quarterback. But, um, you know, you look at guys like JPP, he's not going to be around very much longer. Uh, you, you do have your little speed demon, um, Tasmanian Devil, off the edge. It gets a ton of pressures. But I just get the feeling that it's it's not quite good enough, and we're also going to be replacing guys like Sue along the interior. Um, there's just a lot of guys leaving. And so... Um, it's not the worst pass rush in the world, but it is an important component. The defense does a great job. Your defensive coordinator does a great job of scheming guys to get after the quarterback. And so I think he's going to come in and he's going to be given a great opportunity to be a great pass rusher for a solid defensive coordinator and a team that does a good job getting after the quarterback. Um, and, you know, if we can keep this thing stoked up, if we can keep the quarterback going strong, and, I, you know, I obviously he shows some sign of wear, signs of wear, but he's still doing a good job. Um I think we can still compete, I guess is what I'm getting at. I, I you know, it's it's the window is closing, but if we can keep the quarterback going, if we can keep the, the defense, especially the defensive line and the pass rush going, um, I think we can continue to have an, another year or two of possibly getting after a Super Bowl championship. It's the best I can do. With the 27th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Patrick Jones, edge rusher, Pittsburgh. Um, it's a little bit of a reach, but it's just a gigantic need. I mean, I mentioned that you don't really have Super Bowl aspirations if you don't have an edge rusher. This may be the exception to the rule because the Titans certainly seem like they're they're on their on a war path right now to hoist the Lombardi Trophy. But it's tough, man, and they they just don't really have anybody along that defensive line. Uh, you know, with the exception of one defensive lineman, but. Um, if you don't have good edge rushers, and, and it's not just the pass rush, it's the run defense, it's, just, it's the whole package, it's not there. And I do tend to think that's going to be the undoing for them in terms of their Super Bowl aspirations. They've got a team right now in the last four weeks that's averaging 40 points a game, and I still don't think they're going to get it, get it done because you just you have to have somebody that can get after the quarterback to, to make the quarterback uncomfortable, and they just don't really have that. So very important need. We're willing to reach a little bit. Patrick Jones to the Titans. With a 28th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Zaven Collins, edge rusher, Tulsa. So obviously if Patrick Jones was a reach, so is Zaven Collins. But again, I think it's important. We've got a really, really good football team. The defense is starting to click. The offense has been clicked basically since week one. Um, one of the premier teams right now, I think if you're, if you're betting on the Bills, you're not completely out of your mind. Not only are they good, but they're continuing to get better. But my concern is when you look at guys – off the edge I, I just I'm not a big fan Hughes obviously is a complete freak um, how he's able to do what he's doing at his age I don't know but he's not going to be around forever uh, you look at young guys like AJ Epinesa looks kind of like a swing and a miss maybe he's going to step it up but even if he does we have to be better so um we're going to continue to grow as a football team, a, a promising team in terms of the youth and everything else. So so we're feeling great about it, but we have to get more youthful and talented on the defensive side of the ball, and that's where Zayvon Collins is going to come in out of Tulsa. With the 29th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Mac Jones, quarterback, Alabama. Kind of iffy. I don't, I don't really know what, what Saints fans feel about this. However, it's very clear to me that you don't have the quarterback you need on the roster. And I, I think the other great thing about it is the Saints do a great job of, of taking what you have and making it work. And I think the quarterbacks you have behind Breeze just don't have enough. I think Mac does. Um, again, he's got some limitations, but if you put him in an offensive system that basically runs itself and your job is to show up, do your job, and not be terrible, I think he can manage that, right? When you when you got a guy like Alvin Kamara doing what he's doing, when you got one of the better wide receivers in football there, um, you know, I don't know how long Jared Cook's going to be around, but he's in an environment and an ecosystem in which you have a dominant defense and an offense that runs itself. I think he's got an opportunity to come in and be, be a very good quarterback, and that's the direction we're going to go. With the 30th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select 
Travis Etienne, running back, Clemson. Couple couple points here. Number one, I know Etienne for for a lot of the draft community is nowhere near the top guy anymore. It's Najee Harris. Talk to these guys who have these boards because the same people that are saying that they don't have him as the number one on the board. Najee Harris is still like pick 40 on all these boards. Travis Etienne is 15 overall. Again, I'm just doing what it is. Um, the other issue is, I mean, this Steelers offense is putrid. It is, again, looking at the last four weeks, it might be the worst offense in football, rivaling even the Jets. It's it's so unbelievably bad. The quarterback play, the wide receiver play, the offensive line play, the running backs are non-existent. And so you look at that and say, look, we would rather have a tackle, a guard, a center, a tight end, a quarterback, a wide receiver before we would rather have a running back. But the problem is... It's not just about need, it's about talent. And do we need a running back? I think the answer is yes, we don't have a good running back. And again, right now on our board, Travis Etienne is like 15 overall and we're picking at pick 30. He's only falling this far because nobody wants to take him. Partially because the comment section is just gonna shred me every single time. I can't let the 15th best guy on my board fall all the way out of the first round to a team that absolutely could use his his services. Do we need a lot of other stuff? Yes, but what am I supposed to do? Reach on a third round quarterback? I just, I can't do that. So we're taking by far the best player that's available that is a need for our team, Travis Etienne, to the Steelers. With the 31st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Christian Barmore, defensive tackle, Alabama. Um, The biggest issue I have with the pick overall is the fact that this shouldn't be a need. Um, We have guys like Kingsley Kiki that are starting to step up a little bit, and we just paid Kenny Clark a massive amount of money to be a dominant defensive tackle. The problem is we're not getting the production. And so I think the best way to, to phrase this pick is, you know, Kenny Clark was at his best when Mike Daniels was there next to him. And they formed this sort of dynamic duo. I mean, you couldn't just double Kenny Clark because Mike Daniels was an animal. Um, I wish Kenny Clark was able to be a dominant force and a pass rusher and all that um, as it is but it doesn't seem to be working out quite that way. And look, having a dominant defensive line from one end to the other all the way across, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and so having a, a Christian Barmore and a Kenny Clark dominate while you have a Zadarius and Rashawn and Preston that are doing whatever it is they're doing um, by the time 2021 rolls around, um, there's really no downside other than feeling like it's a defeated thing. I, I wish it wasn't a need but it is. They have to do better up front. They have to do better at stopping the run. They have to do better bringing pressure on quarterbacks more consistently. Um, And so this is what we're going to do. Christian Barmore to the Packers. With the 32nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Aziz Ojulari, edge rusher, Georgia. Now, it's a little bit of a curveball, and I don't know how this is going to play with Chiefs fans, but it's kind of similar to how I feel about the Packers. It's Listen, we have an offense that nobody can stop, right? We just, you can't stop the Chiefs offense. Defensively, that's not entirely the case. In fact, as we get closer to the end of the year, we're seeing the defense slowly slip in the wrong direction. I know we've got Jones already, and I understand that we've got Frank Clark already, but what what does a defense look like that has Frank Clark and Jones and um, Nadi, who's a great run defending defensive tackle, and now Ojolari on the other end. I mean, it's just, again, from end to end, regardless of how you feel about those guys uh, by themselves, I think Frank Clark has, I don't know, I'm, I'm not as high on him as, as maybe people were when, when he first came to Kansas City. But either way, I mean, you look at that group as a group, it's just dominant. And, and the goal here is you can't stop the offense, you can't stop the defense. It's just, it's automatic Super Bowls, right? So that's that was my thought process. But again, let me know in the comments. It's going to do it for Mock Draft 11. Uh, I would really love it if we could get a uh, like on this video. Please leave comments and suggestions and everything else that you uh, have thoughts on for this particular draft. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to me. Hit the little bell notification so you don't miss your team's mock as well as these first round mocks that have been coming out every Monday. Um, Otherwise, uh, please check out the little join button. See if that's something you'd be interested in. There's a couple little perks there for you, and it also just really helps me out. Um, Again, these videos take me a week to do. It is a lot of work. I get up very early and do all this stuff. So any and all support you can provide, even if it's just a like, I would really appreciate that. Otherwise, have a great day.